All his life, he was a fighter, but in the end, Harold Ballard wanted to die in peace. For months, the owner of the Toronto Maple Leafs hockey team had been suffering from kidney, heart, and respiratory problems. Yesterday, he told doctors at a Toronto hospital to unplug him from a respirator, a life support apparatus used to aid his breathing. They did. And this afternoon, after getting a haircut and joking with doctors, Ballard died. He was 86 years old. Here's Dan Bjarnason. At Maple Leaf Gardens this afternoon, soon after news was out of the owner's death, flags were flying at half-mast, a tone of dignity rarely associated with the man himself. Harold Ballard was an outrageous character. What the hell's the matter with you? He said whatever he wanted to say and did whatever he wanted to do. He didn't seem to care if no one liked it. And there was a lot not to like about Ballard. It was said the only four-letter word that he didn't understand was tact. We're both tied with the same goddamn brush. His thoughts on women were offensive. They were good for sex, he felt, and little else. And, of course, he was crude. There's a couple of swallowing broads in here. Holy Christ, you ought to see the one in the front. Is she a... Talk about a linebacker. What the hell are we worrying about? The one in the black. Jesus Christ, eh? As an employer, he was a tyrant. He outdid himself when he fired the man who'd pushed his wheelchair for years. Everything Ballard touched turned to controversy. Even when he was caught stealing money from Maple Leaf Gardens in the 1970s, he walked out of prison boasting that serving time had been a pleasure. Outside the, uh, the humiliation and the disgrace, it wasn't bad because I had a, I, you know, I had a pretty good time down there at uh, Mill Haven. As the owner of the Hamilton Tiger Cats, he won a gray cup. But as the owner of the Toronto Maple Leafs, he won nothing. A proud hockey team became perennial sad sacks, rising above mediocrity only on rare occasions. It sounds perverse, but every time Ballard got sick, which was often, two things would happen. Leaf fans thought the team would improve with Ballard gone, and the stock market would drive up the value of garden shares in anticipation of more astute business practices in the era after Harold. In the last few years, Ballard's life seemed a soap opera come to life, and with good reason. He had a lover who took his last name, but he wouldn't marry. His children despised the woman, and they weren't too fond of Dad either. In March, he was admitted to a Toronto hospital. During his latest illness, a court had declared him incompetent, and he lost control of his business affairs. How are you feeling, Harold? Not too good. The few people close to Ballard insisted that deep down, he was really a nice guy. For example, generous with both his time and his money to charities. Toronto Star sports columnist Milt Dunnell, a longtime Ballard observer, says that his old friend had a carefully cultivated talent for getting publicity that he craved. He would do outrageous things to make sure he did get uh, in the news. If things had been quiet around the gardens for a while or if uh, baseball and football were getting too much attention, you could be sure Ballard would come up with something ridiculous to uh, get hockey back uh, and Ballard back in the news. In the spotlight to the end, tonight at the Montreal Forum, a rare tribute from longtime rivals. For a few moments of silence, owner of the Toronto Maple Leafs, who died today at the age of 86, Mr. Harold Ballard. Dan B. Arneson, CBC News, Toronto. That's the National, now the Journal.